Welcome everyone. Welcome to Creative Happy Hour, the weekly video podcast where we get drunk on the creative possibilities. That's what we do. So, so we're drinking a gimlet. A gimlet. We're drinking like sailors. You are Micah Black. I am Micah Black and she is Karen Akavain. That's me. And we are your lovely co-hosts for this adventure in drinking and thinking that we like to call Creative Happy Hour. And this week, what are we drinking? Micah is our mixologist. Micah we, the mixologist. Yes, I feel like after this podcast, I will be... You are. I might be a bartender. You I might, might just work at a bar because right? that might be what I'm good at. Why the fuck not? <laughs> so, so we're drinking a gimlet. A gimlet. We're drinking like sailors. We're drinking like sailors. And I... I said and I she... Gonna, yeah. I'm she on fully theme. in theme. Yes, completely. Today, which I'm not. I'm... No. You're lame. You're just I'm more of like a pirate. She's, yeah, you're a pirate. She's like, <laughs> R, And I'm like... Oh, maybe. Um, so yeah, so the gimlet is a very English drink. Yes, very English. It's um, and well, let's taste it first because we it, have it. I made it, it and I have. We made it, and we're gonna see how it is. Mm. Hey, simple but good. Sour as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. So mm. the sour, we have you know researched this, and now we know that the sour is lime. And it is so, it was for the sailors to combat yes. scurvy. Scurvy sounds really not sexy. Mm, no, it's mm -mm. not. You no, know, no. I'm like, hot sailor comes to town and he has scurvy. I'm yeah, not into it. No. It's not a good no. look. It's kind of like a hard pass. Like, you know, <laughs> you're like, oh, hey, sailor. Oh, no, scurvy. Yeah. Scurvy. Yeah. Yeah. No. You just, no. Scurvy away. Scurvy away. <laughs> okay, so tell me how you made okay, this fabulous so the way sour that I made concoction. It, yes, yes. I made it with. Gin, Hendrix. Hendrix. It's so a this wonder. Bottle's getting very. I know. Low. I was gonna say it's a wonder we have anything left in the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's you know we don't drink that much. Mm. <laughs> do, do, do. Um. <laughs> and then roses, sweet and lime juice. Mm. I mean, if this doesn't spike your insulin, Holy I don't hell. know what oh will. God. <laughs> I read about this shit. So this was invented in what, 1867 or yeah. something? Yeah, sugar and lime. I mean, well, yeah, but before that, they were putting alcohol in everything, just like we do. And <laughs> they found a way to preserve the limes with sugar. Oh, look, it's our little bitch. Yeah, Weekly. welcome back. Hi, Fiona. <laughs> um, <laughs> They found a way to preserve the limes using sugar instead of alcohol. Yeah. And they obviously wanted this for use by the British Navy. So all those hot little officers, okay, Doug, yeah. all those hot little officers were, you know, descurvifying themselves. Yeah. With I mean, it's medicinal. Juice. And then they added the Navy grade gin. Oh, what which is was that? like 144 proof or something. Yeah, that'll kill anything. I mean, they're right? they're like, let's let's kick out scurvy and syphilis at the same time. <laughs> let's just sterilize that so like, guy's. They'll never have children, but they yeah. don't have scurvy or syphilis. <laughs> this is a complete oh, it's sterilized. Fantastic. Method. It's the the complete fantastic sailor solution. Now, That's do what not they call take it. that as you know history. No, but do not take that as like a recommendation. Like if you have syphilis, please Don't go to the doctor. Try to take Navy. Do not. Yeah. No. No. Nuts. Do no. not have no. a gimlet and think that you can. You can have you one know. as well. I'm not. Saying I mean, you can have that you with know. your antibiotics, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with your penicillin. Check with your doctor. That's a different drink. Yeah. Check. But, it's called a penicillin. It's called a no. What's it called? There's one called penicillin. Yeah. yeah. Well, we should you know, do that next time. You we can always wash artist. down your penicillin you with can. a gimlet. We can do a we can do a syphilitic artist um, podcast Ooh, one day. I That'd love be amazing. That. We'd be like amazing. artist who had syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's getting very romantic in here. It's getting very thematic. Yes, it's, it is. Um, and the Hendrix, I hate to tell you, eighty-eight proof. That's for wusses. I mean, yeah, it's you, not even thinking? close to a navy. That's the sad. The I navy. Feel disappointed. Um, Navy I'm trying grade. to think Navy of the grade. Yeah, Navy, Navy grade. the Navy, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. The Army, Army Navy. I I can't remember. I mean, all these drinks that we've been having, like the French seventy five. They're these English soldiers and sailors. Guys on boats. They were drinking like hella good. I mean, it's crazy. They right? were. They were. Yeah. They were like, let's throw some lime up in right? here and you know go well, dancing tonight. You know, when I went, so when I was, you know, a, a nice young French lady. <laughs> In my previous life. Oh, really? When was that? When I was, I was a nice Do French tell. lady um, in the <laughs> 90s. And uh, 
the dog's still here and you can't see her, so you think I'm doing some weird <laughs> weird thing with my yeah. sailor shirt. Whatever. <laughs> um, we they had this French uh, Navy or was it Navy or Air Force? It was an I can't remember. Anyway, I drank that much. But they had this boat and it was a helicopter carrier. Yeah, craft. that would be Navy. Well, no, no it, it would be both. Right? Yeah, it would be know. both. Whatever. Army, Navy, whatever. You know what I'll do. Right? Just drink, drink, drink your problems away. <laughs> so they came to New York and they invited all the nice family young French ladies mm. um, onto their boat. And their boat had something like 5,000 bottles of champagne. Jeez. And I was like, this is awesome. And <laughs> it was fantastic. We had this huge party and then I took them all clubbing because I was like the New York nightclub queen back then. So we went to Tunnel. So me and like 20 French sailors oh, at Tunnel. Wow. It was amazing. But the champagne was memorable. It was great. And they did wow. not have gimlets. But that's okay. That's okay. They weren't. They weren't English. English. They might as well have been at the end of the night. I don't know. And I hope they didn't have syphilis. But that's. <laughs> well, I mean, even if they did, you've. You I know, would know by now. You've been to the doctor I since would know then. By now. <laughs> I would barely, hope so. Barely, barely. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope that we got that so, taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how yeah. is the gimlet named? Why was it named the gimlet? Wasn't it, it a, a thing that bored holes yeah, or it's something? Like, yeah, like it's like some kind of a rotary drill. drill or yeah, something? some handheld shank. Right. So <laughs> it had, like the gimlet, piercing I guess, thing. is like a piercing. It's a piercing. It'll it'll pierce through your head. Yeah. Give you that <laughs> kind of a woo. headache, I think. Yes. <laughs> but then also they have another story because they're like, that story sounds really good, but maybe Wasn't not. Wasn't there a not. surgeon? The surgeon. Or Sir, Sir Thomas Gimlet Sir or something. Thomas Gimlet, yes. Yes. I like to pronounce it Gimlet. 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 <laughs> um, and yeah, he was the one who decided that the scurvy thing needed to be... You know. Yeah, he's like, they're going to be drinking gin constantly. Just throw some wines in wine. there. Get yeah. the vitamin C on board and everybody's fine. And then fine. everybody's fine and happy. Yeah. yeah. So how does the sourness of this strike you? Are you like, you know, is it a balance? It Like flavor-wise, why do we think it still is popular? It's, it's kind of one of those drinks that is, you know, both English and American Hollywood. All these yeah. hard, like these detectives in the movies that are drinking their gimlets and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, why do we think that is? There's something kind of... Yeah, I mean it's simple. I mean if you it's simple. if you mm -hmm. like gin, it Which, complements the gin. I mean it's yeah. not gin is one of those flavors that if you're not into it, you're not into you're it. You're not into and it. So yeah. it does have that kind of gin, juniper that ginny flavor juniper you know. thing. And it's got the sour. I mean, I like the simplicity. I think it's also kind of badass. Yeah, because right? it's gonna eat your teeth. I mean, let's just—it's acidic. Right? It's very and, acidic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's super freaking sour. And in fact, I think that this has inspired us that when we go into our thinking, thinking part, part of this whole ring roll, that we're gonna talk about when you sour on a creative project or when you sour on the very notion of uh, you know being creative and being going creative this, in general. If you yeah. just you know are just. Super pissed. Turned off. Turned by off. Being creative. Demoralized. Or you hit a wall. You hit a wall. Yeah, a you gimlet know. wall. You hit a gimlet you wall. Pierced through your head. Whatever it is. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna be talking about that. But in the meantime, we are going to talk about glass half empty, glass half full, because this is the drinking part, and we're not gonna mm. be too serious. Though I find us becoming increasingly serious sometimes, and I feel sad about it. Yeah, it right? makes me want to drink. Right? It drives me to drink. Let's do it. Let's mm. just drink some of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, so, so I think we need to lighten it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, we do eventually, but right now I had like a glass half empty as usual because I'm, I'm that You're negative. You're Debbie Downer. I mean, I'm Debbie Downer. My name is Debbie. <laughs> I'm a downer. <laughs> but I was thinking English drink, English Navy, and of course my little mind went straight to Brexit. And, oh, you know, that's yeah. very much in the news. It has been forever. They've now decided that maybe they're going to do more of a slow burn instead of, you know, sudden death. But... Well, yeah, because they have no idea the, the consequences of fucked there. Um, yeah. exiting <laughs> like Europe. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Exactly. I know. Like, I think, you know, so you've spent a lot of time in England. I lived there for a time, and I spent a lot of time there. I'm actually going there in, in a, a couple weeks. minutes. Yeah, yeah, in a couple minutes, in a few <laughs> weeks. Um, but I was thinking, of course, as I always do, about... Don't do too much thinking, remember. I'll try not drinking. to. Oh, God. I was drinking, and I had a thought <laughs> put into my mind about how does this affect 
creatives. Like oh, how, yeah, because, I like that. you know, when I lived in London, it was such a vibrant city. It was incredibly creative. You know, every single kind of artist, musician, you know, dancer, street artist. Yeah, it's chef. a creative epicenter, I mean, it's, really. It is. It Filmmaking. Really is. Yeah. I mean, it, it really felt like it was the right place to be at the right time. Yeah, it's kind of a European hub in many ways. Oh, it was such a hub. And all these talented European artists and creatives and architects and filmmakers, all that stuff, they were all flowing into London. And I have to say, I started to feel like a little difference, I think. Maybe it was just in my head, but I don't think so. Like, it was a definite Debbie Downer feeling. And I kind of saw the contrast between how London is feeling these days mm -hmm. and how, like, L.A. is feeling these days. And L.A. has kept up that energy of that positivity. And I know so many European creatives who are like, screw London, I'm going to L.A. So Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it was it's a pretty... I, I don't know if just, like, the... the surrounding villages got jealous of London. Yeah, the I, I surrounding don't know. villages I mean, were like, screw London, let's make them lose all their money. But I mean, it kind cool of people. reminds me of, you know, it's a similar type of political situation that was hap it's been happening in the United States where we have yeah. this really polarized, mm -hmm. more conservative, um, you know, less educated, um, you know, it, it, less well, I, diverse yeah. group of people, more more Christian or and, and I don't have anything, you know, no, against just any of Wiccan those things. Doesn't mean it doesn't <laughs> because I'm like armchair Wiccan doesn't mean um no that I'm anti but, but you know, I do Christian. think I think that at any point when you have a policy of keeping people out or getting people out and that you become less diverse in any way, shape or well, form. Well in really, you know, it in, in you know, I, I don't mean to drag Brene Brown into this conversation. She might Let's be kind of it. pissed at she, me, but, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, she talks a lot about how there's no, you know, if you're, if you're not vulnerable, there is mm -hmm. no creativity. Right. Vulnerability is, is part of the criteria. Completely, like exposing yourself to and, those. And this whole, you yeah. know, this whole, you know, fear-based mm -hmm. mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. of, doing politics and you know if, if you're different or you're yeah. you know we're afraid of you then we're not letting you in exactly that is, if you're not one of us and it's like what is one of us it, is one of us like boring and one-sided you know yeah so it's basically shutting are? out being mm -hmm. vulnerable to yeah. difference and open to difference i mean right. open uh, open and, being and that's the, the biggest creative oh, creativity killer completely that completely you, that yes. you can you know sign up for well that and that's actually so i was talking to a few creative uh, you know entrepreneurs and individuals mm. in london and it's really interesting because one of my friends who is kind of a very creative pastry chef mm. and her ex-husband was a filmmaker they used to live in london he does animation he did mm. i'm not gonna actually mention who he is he's her ex for okay. a reason um but <laughs> major large franchise that he was a very large part of he won the oscar and if that's bringing us too close to who he is I'm not going to say anything more about him. We'll but Brexit that conversation. We'll Brexit the conversation. That's part of the conversation. You know, smoothly. But she, he, first of all, they already, you know, when they started talking about Brexit, he's like, get me out of here. And they came to LA. Mm -hmm. And then when Is they... Is he English? No, he's uh, French. Okay. And when the whole, you know, conversation of their marriage falling apart kind of hit, she's like, okay, I'm going to go back to England because they had a home there and she mm. had friends there. And she goes back there, and all of a sudden she's like, man, I'm feeling a lot less secure. I'm feeling a lot less creative. You know, when, when I feel that I'm in a situation of not knowing what's going on and where I'm going to be, I find that I have a hard time maintaining that creativity. Right. You know, like when well, I... you go into those lower, you know, yeah. Abraham Maslow had the... The pyramid of self actualization. Well, yeah, like survival when, doesn't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're just trying to survive. Exactly. At that point. Exactly. And I've moved so many times, and every time I've moved, after the move comes a jump into creativity and doing new mm. things and everything. But that period before you actually move, I mean, it is a killer. You know, you end up kind of so doubtful and you don't know and all the projects kind of grind to a halt. So she felt that way. And then another friend of mine who was one of the most creative people that I knew and who was really into fashion and everything was so cool and so new and blah, blah, blah. She's now basically volunteering for her kid's preschool because she's like, eh, not even worth it. She's like, I don't even know where I'm going to be living. I don't know what's going to happen. This is, no, it's this true. is going from like... 
it is bad to work. Well, I think it's very for, like glass the creative, half yeah. empty for sure. And yeah. then you think of all the creative couples that are binational. So maybe you know yeah. one member is English and the other is European, and all of a sudden they have to make that choice of like, oh, sorry, honey, it's not going to be easy for me to come back and forth anymore, or to work in either country, and like just right. that whole thing, like ripping people apart you know, separating people out on the basis of nationality, I'm thinking, right. yikes, you know, we're starting to really tread on shitty territory, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're starting to, you know, become the places that, you know, people leave. Yes. You know, we're starting to yes. become that same thing that we argued that we weren't. Exactly. You know? exactly. I mean, that's, you know, the, the, the democratic, mm -hmm. vibrant, uh, you know, diverse places, exactly. is, you know, honoring right people's freedom of speech, freedom of religion, you know, all mm -hmm. of those things. I mean, mm -hmm. although, you know, we, you know, Americans came to this country to escape the English. Yeah. And then we were kind of assholes. About you know, it. tyranny. I and, mean. and so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother history and we're not actually you yeah. going to get we're, into We're that. not going to get into that at all. We're going to Brexit that. We're going to Brexit that conversation as well. We're liking the verb Brexiting. We're going to yeah, do that I left, like right that. and center. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I just think, yeah, looking at that, like I'm thinking, is there a, well, and I actually, they've observed that, um, just people immigrating to, you know, from other European countries. Mm -hmm. So not even the scary shithole countries that somebody mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> um, not even name any names. Clean white European countries. Yeah. Like we'll leave that to Twitter. Right. We're not I mean, involved yeah, in that exactly. Shit. We'll, we'll, we'll Brexit that. Yeah. But <laughs> any country, any European country, the immigration to England has been cut a huge percent voluntarily like before that was imposed like nobody wants to do this you right. know like they're not so when you lose that richness you lose that diversity and then what happens is that people who are attracted to England as a you know cultural hub they're not going to make a business there so you're not mm -hmm. only losing creativity because so many people are like oh creatives who gives a shit they're artists like they're not contributing to the economy well they're well, certainly not going to be calling in the people from the the, the villages to come work yeah. in the creative mm-hmm you know, I mean, they're, they're living in the village to not be, exactly. I don't know. I'm making, I'm making huge generalizations. General, it doesn't about, matter. You can't, it's not nice. This is a safe, this is a safe space for well, you. You can do that. that. I mean, yeah, that, but no, you, I'm thinking that a lot of the creatives who are, are going from city to city is my guess, or they're going from countryside to city. They're not wanting to necessarily until they're established, make that, you know, trip in the other direction or right. to, and I just think that if you, but that's the thing that so many companies that were like, oh, I'm coming to mm -hmm. London or I'm coming to Manchester, or I'm coming to Scotland because it's such a creative hub and it's right. very inspiring and there's lots of creative labor because that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. So many creative, you know, entrepreneurs are also, you know, they have side hustles or they're working for these other companies and they're great employees to have. And all of a sudden that's not going to be there. So these companies are like, I'm not investing here. And all of a sudden that means less art patrons. And that right. means less people to be actually consuming any of the things that are made by your nationals who all of a sudden don't have that international, you know, they don't like if you're doing a ballet and you can't hire, you know, a French dancer and a German dancer and a Russian dancer, like, uh, see, it was a little one note to me, and then all of a sudden, it's true. Yeah. I mean, I just saw um, Sleeping Beauty in San Francisco on Saturday oh, night. Nice. Oh, it was fabulous! Oh. But yeah, it had a very international, super cast diverse, of, su very international Shut cast up. of dancers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they were very, you know, and, and all look, over the world, these dancers. Exactly. And then look who study. actually, um, you know, donates money to the ballet. It's going to be Chinese companies, it's going to be, yep. you know, English companies, French companies. Like, they're all participating and then people who actually go the patrons of the ballet mm -hmm. are actually going to be international you remove that all of a sudden you're just being very self-referential and very boring i think so i'm kind of you know that's super half empty but then i think okay how do we look at this positively these creatives are going to find ways to be creative no matter well, what i mean it it you know the obstacle is the way that's another yeah. book that you should yeah. read mm -hmm. um and we'll have to put the name of the author yeah. i I have the book. I've read the book several times. I've given Authors. the book as gifts. The obstacle is the way, and yeah. it's based on stoicism. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, you use obstacles yeah. 
as an opportunity mm -hmm. to hone your craft, yeah. become stronger, see what's build important character, to you, you know, yeah, yeah, distill your values, mm -hmm. distill being, you know, distill. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but no, seriously, I mean, I think it, glass half full is essentially yeah. whenever you come up against some kind of mm -hmm. barrier or obstacle. It is instead of looking at it as you know a barrier or an obstacle, you look at it as an look, opportunity. Look at it as a, it's as an a opportunity. Means, you know, and if you look historically something. at a lot of art, you know, it's been during turmoil that some yes. of the most fantastic. A lot of the art, emigres who have. Yeah, been, I mean, because I think that the fantastic been, art has been made during totally. tur you know turmoil. I, I can and see that conflict. It's, yeah, and it's a bummer of a situation that that's the case. But and also, I think that very much like so many of the European creatives who've been living in England for such a long time. England is their home. I mean, mm -hmm. you kick them out and now they're saying, okay, if you've been there for more than five years, blah, 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 you're going to, you make these wow, rules. That's it's not so, very long, right? It's very arbitrary and it's very, you know, iffy. But then I think the other thing is, is that it's leaving space for all of these other European cities to become these art capitals and mm -hmm. to become these creative hubs in their own right because London was so big. I mean, it was the, the one game in town. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. it was incredibly more developed. So now you're seeing Berlin, you know, step up to the game. You're seeing like yeah. Portugal, you know, Lisbon is getting super cool. What about getting... Lisbon Lemons? <laughs> Lisbon Lemons, which we found out, spoiler alert, if you didn't watch our previous episode, totally a normal fucking lemon. We thought it was an interesting ingredient. Yeah. Not so. Not, not so. that exotic. It's, it's not that exotic. It's all in the name. <laughs> But I think that that's definitely interesting to see what, it, you know, who's going to step up. And I think that all of these other places that I just named, <laughs> you know, they need to watch out because I see where Europe is going with this whole fear of, you know, immigrants coming in and they need to chill out, you know, mm -hmm. because, yeah, let's find a way to integrate people so that we can make this cool creative whole, that we can make these new mm -hmm. creative ways of making things work. But, you know, our country is the same way. Where well, we're I feel like we should so... channel that mm -hmm. instead of, you know, ooh, you know, yeah. avoid the situation. And it, it's something, I mean, we all have ancestry of yeah. being an immigrant. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. I mean, we, we're, we're the social animal is the human. And, mm -hmm. and you know, everybody's doing these 23 and me. Oh, I know. And they're starting to see that. I found out you know, I'm white. It's amazing. I'm so white. Well, I'm my, English. Well, That's my all cousin's wife, she uh -huh. found out, well, she's adopted, but she, all these years, she's like, I'm Cuban and Mexican. I'm you Cuban oh, and Mexican. I love this story. Yes. And then she finds out that she's like 98.9% Irish. Isn't that great? And the irony like, is is that she was like studying Irish culture. She got a master's in like incredible. Irish like Irish history or she something. She was just bullshit. into it? She was obsessed oh, with Ireland and had no shit. idea she thought she was Cuban and Mexican. Obsessed with Ireland. That's so funny. We'd go constantly on trips to Ireland. Oh my and it god. Turns out it turns that she's out. like there you go. Irish. That is some total genetic memory shit yeah, happening. Some it's shit going down right? with ancestors. Incredible. Well, one of my friends thought that she was Chinese because <laughs> um, her mom grew up in Hawaii, was yeah. adopted, and back in the day, they, they ate I, a lot of Chinese food. <laughs> I don't. They, I think <laughs> that in Hawaii, they were just like uh, Chinese, Japanese, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, if you think of the time around the war where being Japanese was not an awesome thing. Right. Anyway, my friend is told, first of all, they said that she was black. This is the best. They're like, she's black because she was adopted <laughs> by an African-American family. And they're just like, yeah, she's black. Just So yeah. they put her on the... That makes um, sense. Yeah, right? I mean, it's incredible. So on the census, there's one where they say she's Chinese and one where they say she's black. It's like, <laughs> it's yeah, like, not so much. Yeah. But confused. so my friend, right? So my friend grows up thinking that she's Chinese. Her mom passes away when she's young. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she grows up with her dad's side of the family, yeah. which are, you know, white Americans. And, but always thinking Chinese, 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 goes to China and is just not feeling that... Home yeah, kind of she's not connecting with Chinese at all. Culture. At all, she's like, I don't get it. She's trying to force her daughter to learn Chinese. She's like, you're Chinese, you know. And the daughter's like, I, I can't do this. But the daughter's like, but I love this Harajuku stuff. You know, this is so cool. Yeah. And come to find out, you're like, I like green tea ice cream she's, or whatever. Yeah. She's Japanese. She's, she's Japanese. Japanese. Full on, full on Japanese. It's not Chinese. And she was like, <sighs> great. Okay, cool. Uh, waiting until you're 55 to find this out, not the most awesome thing. Not that it matters, 
But I think it does when you made the effort to kind of try to well, go somehow, into that. Well, somehow, I do think, I mean, I do think humans are, you know, I studied anthropology, mm -hmm. cultural anthropology, and I do think that there is, you know, we, we did grow up in these, you know, tribes and clans and, yes, you know, and that, that is our, that is our that's evolutionary That's our identity. Like, we try to history. create identity. Yeah, we, we try do. to create identity. We try to create belonging. And it's belonging. based on the group. Right. You know, it's like, yeah, and it's based on who you are. We evolved that way. Yeah, and we've evolved so that that is not I mean, some so of us much. has evolved. I mean, some I would that evolved, we've some evolved, less than others. We're trying. But I think that that's why these cultural tribes in England, yes. these people are very much like they're feeling like they're, well, they're very among, clannish. They're clannish. They're very clannish. Maybe in bad ways, maybe in good ways, yeah. but I think it's incredibly harsh to tear them apart from sure. each other or from where they've decided yeah. to be. I just think that's a really hard thing to do. So glass, very half empty on that one, but half full because we'll watch and see what happens. I think. Well, and, and glass half full, like I said, I think a lot of fantastic creative stuff comes totally. out of adversity conflict and adversity conflict. Yes. and using the obstacle as the way, as, totally. as an opportunity totally. instead of, I, I like I like looking that way. Yeah. Can I tell you that this gimlet is incredibly strong? I mean, you mine is. Yours. My glass is still awful. Yeah, awful. that's what Thank pizza's God. for. That's what pizza's for. Uh, so that's what I we're going I know, do. this is a little bit ironic because I'm always glass I know. half full and your glass yeah. half empty and, and my glass look, is half it's empty. Very, yeah. It's freaking strong. Yeah, it's I mean, I don't care if it's not navy grade. It is, damn. Because um, it's mm. purely half and half. I mean, that is some... Crazy. Yeah, it's like sugar. Sugar. And That's liquor. what it is. Is when I have the sugar with my liquor, it it's a tunnels. It it's tunnels, a, it, it gimlets it straight through. It bores into it goes, your. And it goes. <laughs> It pierces right through my liver <laughs> and my brain. So on that intelligent note, I think that we've had enough of the drinking yes. part, and I think wow. that we're gonna have a slice of pizza, and then we're gonna join. And then you guys. we're gonna come back for the thinking. The part. thinking part. It's yeah. gonna be so amazing. get ready. Because get ready. We haven't even gotten started. Be yet. prepared. Exactly. Yeah. We'll be talking about souring on your creative projects. So, cheers to you guys cheers. for a second. Meal break. Refill break. So sorry, Micah. The three bitches are here. We're here. We're the back. Three graces. <laughs> cheers to you. What a lovely pizza break. Yes. Um, it was really, really good. It was delivered to happy hour. It was. So now we're ready to do the thinking, thinking. part. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. I feel so, I feel smarter already. So oh, we sure. were going to talk about how you can sour on a creative project or just sour on the creative lifestyle in general. And I think there are a bunch of things that can make a us feel lot that way. Of things. I mean, in fact, it's probably easier to sour on it than to actually keep, you know, trucking along all happy and hunky dory, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's just dive in. I mean, one mm -hmm. of the one of the main things that, you know, destroys, kills mm -hmm. actually. There's an article I read by this this guy Jim Compton Hall from a a site called Canva. Oh, Canva, yeah. Canva. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I mean, one of the the first ones is monotony. Monotony will kill any. I thought you were gonna say dream. monogamy, and I was like, yes. <laughs> monotony. You're like, that's so obvious. <laughs> I knew that. Um, I mean, monotony, I, monogamy. I mean, they're not very mono. similar for no reason. Right. Okay? Yeah. One thing I mean, all the one, time. They one go trick, hand in hand in hand. Hand in hand. One hand trick hand. pony ing. So in what so way? They, like, can you tell me? Like, can you? Yeah. Break it down? So like, the same old. You know, you're you're going to the same coffee shop. You're going to the same job. You're going to the same places. You do the same things all the time. You're like, I do laundry on Wednesdays, and we have, yes. you know, chips and schedule, eggs on Tuesday. I and schedule the shit out of myself. Yeah. Always I mean, the same. Wonderful. Yeah, but yeah, you no. know, so essentially, the anti venom to monotony mm -hmm. is. Shake mix up. things up. Mixology. 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 Yeah. Is so mix it up. Go like, somewhere different. Go yes. away for the weekend. And we you mentioned know, go that. to a different fucking coffee shop for God's sakes. You could don't do that. be such a fucking creature of habit. You know, like <laughs> yes. you I know, agree. just for sure. And I, I, I think like I, I always joke to my husband. I'm like, you're so freaking lucky that we're still married because I am so anti monotony. Like I just cannot. It's horrible. I get sick of things yeah. like really damn fast. But I think that I've kind of created this balance where I can change everything. I don't have my 
habits that are so hardwired and that way I can stay with my husband and not have to change him out. You know, or kill him is different. <laughs> That's a different discussion for a different day. But um, but yeah, but the monotony part, like I try to wipe that out in so many ways because if not, yeah, it is soul crushing and it is creativity crushing. Yeah, I mean, have you, you just, felt that before? Well, where you yeah, were... you don't feel inspired. You're just like, oh. And a lot of times, you know, I'll feel that like, oh, I already know. Like I have to do this, and then after work I gotta go do that, and then yeah. I gotta do this, and you know. If I have just a little bit of time where I'll get up a little bit earlier, have mm -hmm. my coffee, read my book, do my knitting, whatever, mm -hmm. if I just have like 15, 20 minutes to myself. Oh, it feels where, like so much more. Uh, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Then you then you have this little moment for yourself and you don't resent all the other assholes that you come across you all do, day long. Well, you do end up resenting it. You I resent think when that. it becomes this habit thing and it becomes this obligation, even the most creative project is gonna end up feeling like an obligation. Right. You know, that you, and it's like sometimes it is an obligation because like sometimes we, you know, creativity is our job or sometimes, but I mean, we do need to be able to mm. shake it up to feel like we are, you know, often creatives are creative entrepreneurs right. because they want to have the flexibility and the right. freedom. So when you're the one imposing things on yourself, it's kind of not awesome, and that's kind right. of what you were trying to, you know, avoid in the right. real world right. by taking this route that wasn't necessarily easy. Okay, so number two on okay. this list mm -hmm. is the ten deadly factors to kill creativity or, or sour. to sour you on yes. creativity. Uh huh. Is self doubt. That is so major, and but yeah. that's so ego driven in a way because it's not self doubt that you honestly think that you can't face yourself. It's you thinking what other people are going to think about well, what and, done. Well, and, you know, that I'm not going to be able to do this. You know, mm -hmm, you, you mm -hmm. start doubting that you have the capacity to do it. And, Which, you know, and yeah, that's... Newsflash, none of us have, well, many of us don't have the capacity to do mm -hmm. things to the level of what we see. I mean, all of the finished creative projects we see out there are to a level that is, you know, up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... You look at a musician that's performing on stage or a ballet dancer or a painter that's in a museum... I mean, those things are the top, top, top achievement in right. any brand of creativity. So who the hell are we to think that we're going to, like, straight out of the gate be like, yay, I can totally do this. We cannot. New, like, total newsflash, spoiler alert. Put down her again. Come on, though. You can't, like, there is no need to even do that. Maybe you'll right. achieve that, but probably not. And can you find something to enjoy without thinking well, that your ego has to be And essentially by... the anti-venom to that uh -huh. is give it a go anyway. Just try oh, it yeah. anyway. Just do try it. it anyway. Look at us. Look I mean, us, we're, Casey. you know, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we ain't no Joe Rogan, but you, you know. No choice. <laughs> yes. You need to have a growth mindset. Growth mindset. Yeah. Oh, Remember, yes. you just put yes. yet at the end of yes. any sentence, and therefore you have a growth mindset. We are not famous yet. See? Look at that. She's a growth mindset. I love it. It, it was so, so nice. easy. I feel so good. The magic of yet. Yes. Yet. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Fear of failure. That's an, I mean, same, same, same Age kind of. will get rid of that. You yeah, because I know, like, like, oh, I, oh, I already constantly. failed my whole life proud, as a failure. Proud to fail. Proud failure. <laughs> I'm the best at failing. I'm like, I'm the failure of all failures. Like, oh my God. I'm I almost, failed chemistry. Oh, yeah. I failed my marriage. I'm so proud when I fail something, like, really spectacularly. Yeah. You know, you're like, wow, I you're crashed. Like, nobody could fail and, like me. Right? You're like, I crashed and burned. That was almost glorious. <laughs> <laughs> That was freaking phenomenal. Like, yeah. oh my God, did you see me wipe out so mm. amazingly? Yeah. I think, yeah, fear of failure is honestly a silly one because you're so right that you'll age out of that because you life will, will teach because, you that yeah, that shit happens that you, Yeah, it's like yeah. a day, yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, I do think we live in a culture where we're, Lots of I mean, eyes I think we're starting, actions, yeah, we're but start, also accepting, yeah, we're, yeah, accepting we're starting failure. to figure out that failure is a necessary yes. part of success, right? All the creative entrepreneurs are like, hashtag fail harder. Yeah. And, you know, it's a little tricky. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm there. fail harder. Well, that's what I think, like, you know, a lot of the people that we think are watching this podcast are kind of like, just like us. Just like us. You're yeah. exactly like us. Where, you know, not, you know, the youngest anymore. I mean, whether we welcome, if you're, well, if you're the under, green fairy light that we have here makes exactly. us look like makes we're 28. And lovely. We're not. We're not that age. But if Close, you, but not that close. If you guys are under the age of, 35 can you comment down below because we would love to know that you're out there yeah be amazing please join us don't don't let us have crickets yeah below, which <laughs> we may but i think that that's the beauty though of getting to that certain age or of being 
our young viewer yeah. thinking, you know, what are these old bitches, you know, what do they know that what we do they know? have to do with, yeah. We failed, we failed a million times and we have learned a lot from it and we're yeah. not that sorry yet. I mean, a little Debbie Downer, like that's me. She's a little, yeah. But look at her glass half full. I mean, come on, it's, 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 it can be done. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty outstanding that I'm as we're cheerful not, as I am. Right? We're not as sour as we could be. Again, the gimlet helps. It people. helps so much. It helps a lot. Yeah. So okay, Not what just else? For scurvy. <laughs> Excuses. Excuses will kill oh, any creative. Yes. Yes. Any creative, you know. Any any achievement. Anything mindset. creative yeah. gets killed by excuses. Uh -huh. There's all kinds of reasons why you can't do something, and the antidote yes. or the antivenom mm -hmm. to this problem mm -hmm. is, you know. Figure out reasons why you can do it. Ooh, I like that. Talk about that. I like that. Or Focus just shoot down your stupid excuses. Because, yeah. I mean, honestly, anytime, you know, especially with my kids or whatever, like if they give me a bunch of excuses, mm -hmm. I'm just like, dudes, I can poke holes in those excuses yeah. 20 times. Like, I didn't have time to do that. Well, I don't know. Like, maybe if you'd woken up, you know, before, right. you know, midday you could have done this mm -hmm. or oh i didn't have this well you could have asked for it or gotten it or i didn't know that i didn't well, have the poster yeah. board for that project yeah or i didn't i didn't have this piece of information well fucking look it up or ask somebody like there's so many the excuses are few i mean can you think of a really valid excuse other than somebody keeling over and dying so that would know? be a really good exercise exercise yeah. write down all the reasons why you can't do something yes and then poke holes in and those. then and then directly across from it, write mm -hmm. a reason why that, that doesn't bullshit. stand up. Yeah, exactly. It's you so know, true. It's bullshit. It and, is bullshit. And it's bullshit is not an answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's that's, true. That's my generalized answer. Yes. However, you got you have to come up with a more specific. Yes. Because that's how the brain works. I think yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to specifically argue against yourself. You need to spoon feed your brain the reasons yeah. why you can do it. You need to punch yourself it. in the face and say, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the gimlet. He's yeah. like, meh. Uh, yeah, exactly. So this one's interesting. Secrets. Mm -hmm. They're saying share your ideas and collaborate. But see, we were you, just talking yeah. about not letting people know so you yeah. don't have the judgment. But I mean, the collaboration, yeah. definitely, it really depends. Because it, it's essentially saying, you know, mm -hmm. I, I read through it. It's essentially mm -hmm. saying, you know, hang out with other creative people and have creative discussions. For sure. And they say that don't you... Don't hang out with people that are really like... Oh my god! I don't do no. anything creative. I don't read. Ooh, creativity is scary and yucky. I, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I like to do something creative, but I have to work for a living. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, whatever. Creativity is a I, waste I, of I work time. constantly, and I'm mm -hmm. still creative. It doesn't exactly. You know, exactly. But I think you know they say that the five people that you spend the most time with around you are the people who impact you most in terms of mm. so if you're spending time with people who are anti-creative and there are people who are anti-creative i mean the yeah. number of people that i grew up with were like anything that has to do with creativity is not real right or it's just a hobby yeah or it doesn't impact anything and that couldn't be further from the truth right but hanging out with those people was a real impediment and it can easily sour you on things because you go why am i even doing this mm -hmm. it's not real but um but i think also yeah being with those supportive people helps hugely mm -hmm. but um, I was gonna say something else that was really smart and you were talking and I was like oh yeah that and then it kind of well escaped. just we were talking about how you know I was saying secrets you know don't mm -hmm. share and you were saying yes, yes that you know sometimes when you share essentially with the wrong people yes it can be very discouraging Completely I mean I know that yeah. I've had that experience Oof. I'm not gonna say where mm -hmm. but I've had yeah. that experience <laughs> I where, where I get very um, yeah. But you know, also, like, why would you do that? You're not you're not making money do that. That's not scalable. That's not, you know, why would you spend money on that? Why would mm -hmm. you, you know, why would you waste your time doing that? That's such a waste of time. Like, mm -hmm. you know. It, the waste of time argument is one of yeah. the most insidious, I think, because, you know, we know it's not a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But so many people will use that as one of the excuses or one of the reasons. And, Where yeah. no one has any business no. telling you what to do with your time. No, at okay? all, at all, no. Now, when you're at work and they're paying you specifically for your time. There's I mean, a you, time and a place for everything. Yeah, and there's all kinds of books. You can yes. read some Marxism about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when you're not do, you know, being paid by someone to, to for your time. You're an adult. You're you can do whatever adults. you want. No one has any want. business telling exactly. you what to do with your time. And you no. need to get very proprietary about that. 
Completely. But also sometimes even other creatives who are having these kinds of issues mm -hmm. or who have soured, they might be the most insidious. Like they yeah, might be the true. most harmful to your point. creativity because they're beyond beyond sour. They're bitter. Yeah. And you know, they see you all gung ho and there is nothing that pisses off a bitter person who's like a total downer than somebody who is cheerfully and happily going about their business. Yeah. Like that is an and absolute going affront. with the flow. Oh my God. They can't yeah, stand they that. Can't like, stand it. If you're not stuck in the same construct as they are and you're not similarly miserable, they're like, you're being obnoxious. You're being yeah. an asshole by being a happy creative. And that is a horrible attitude, but it is so easy to be like, wow, how dare I, you yeah, know, I can't true. do this. And it's so true. you really do need to steer clear of those toxic you know, creative relationships that aren't really, you know, creative. And it's then true. people judging your creative work, you know, nobody can judge no. unless, I mean, learn to differentiate between, you know, active kind of constructive criticism. Well, yeah, and I mean, stuff you, that just, you know. I mean, you know, there are people that I am like, I seek out, you know, with our mm -hmm. podcast and I say, hey, yeah, you know, this is a new creative project I'm doing. Can you yeah. please watch it and give me feedback? I mm -hmm. know you care about me. Mm -hmm. I still want to know the truth. Yeah. You know, I want to know if, you know, I'm sitting in the fat angle or I'm, you know, whatever. Just we tell always me. are. Yeah. Just tell always. me, you know, if I need to get my hair cut or something, <laughs> you know, or I need to get Botox or whatever. Just yeah. whatever the feedback is. Mm -hmm. Just tell me. But I there are certain like, people that I wouldn't ask. Wouldn't even ask. Because, no, exactly. Because I can't trust mm -mm. that it's coming from a clean place. I like that clean place thing clean. because you're so right. It's if you are yeah. tying up your critique in all kinds of layers of, you know, frustration and pent up something. Yeah. It's not going to work out. And it's not, and or you if can have a particular view of the world that Completely. is limited. A yeah, limited um, view of the world isn't isn't helpful no, to you. No. Anybody so would, be be careful about who you She's you know, it. bring into your space and exactly. share your secrets with. Completely. Okay, so number 6 is apathy. Um, yeah. Apathy is, you know, it's a killer, and I've been there. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about that right now, but no. you know, when you get into that place where I'm like, oh, it doesn't well, even matter. It's not gonna get better it than this. It doesn't even this. matter. It doesn't even why matter. I, yeah. Like, why would I even bother? Mm -hmm. And Just, you know, the the antidote or the antivenom to that is, do what you love. Yeah. You know, if you love knitting, if you love basket weaving, if you love, you know, I don't know, like Anything. mud wrestling. You know, that could be very creative. I mean, imagine. <laughs> Do it. Just do what you love. All these different ways Fight. of grabbing, you know. It's, yes. Oh, mud wrestling. Fight is. apathy by doing what you love, okay? Yeah. We're well, going to move on from apathy because this is going to go really No, bad. but if you truly love something, you can't love something and not care and, about it. Right. You can't time. be apathetic when no. you love something. No. And so it, it really is, you know, they say fear is the opposite of love, but I think apathy is yeah. actually the opposite of love. I think it is, yeah. Because yeah. if you love something enough to be scared about it, like so many creatives are scared when they you, work on a yeah, new project. Yeah, you might actually care about it so much that you're really frightened you're because afraid. it means a lot to yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. And that's totally fine. Like, yeah. I think that fear... So I'm reframing Yeah, that. I think I'm not fear, buying that fear No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Like, I don't think that fear is an excuse for anything, and I don't think that it's a bad sign. On the contrary, like, if you care enough to fear, yeah. or if you care enough you're to on decide to something. something, both of those, you're on to something. You're on to something. But if you don't care about something, yeah, maybe you should, you know... Figure out if it really is something yeah. you need to be wasting. If you need your to time spend on. time, yeah, yeah with it. Because then we are talking about wasting your time. So number seven, ego is a big killer. Which, but so, half of these were all ego, ego, ego. Yeah, ego, ego, ego. Mm -hmm. So essentially, stay humble. Whatever that takes. <laughs> Hashtag stay humble. Stay humble. Hashtag <laughs> blessed. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we all know what the ego is. I'm yeah. not, we're not going to get into psych 101. Everybody's we taking can, it to graduate. We can probably do a whole podcast on ego. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. That'll be fun yeah for some we'll do that <laughs> and it might be horrible but we don't care we'll do it yeah, anyway so we'll no ego about that like shit. giant we'll egos. fail we'll fail hard <laughs> <laughs> um number eight the lack of focus is <laughs> you know yeah. so scatterbrain you're not you know you're not drinking enough water you're drinking too much coffee you're drinking too much drink, gin drink, yeah drink it in general you know, you're you're not focused on what it is. And losing focus. Losing focus. But we did discuss in a previous episode, we were talking about the multi-passionate yeah. uh, entrepreneur or creative. And that is not equivalent to losing focus. I mean, because no, you can be focused not. on your important, on your why. You can be focused on your values. You can be yeah. focused on that 
core set of things that are important to you. And you can be doing a lot of things within that. Mm. So that's, you know, don't let anybody tell you like, oh, you've lost focus because you're reading and writing. No, 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 no. no. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. I think it's more of you've made a commitment and And to yourself to do a creative project. I mean, Mm -hmm. it would be like, okay, we're going to do creative happy hour. And then we're going to stop after episode We do two episodes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This one. After this. You know, I'm like, I'm just not really, you know, feeling very focused or I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Like I am a lot of the time, but you know, I think. We just freaking do it. Because, yeah. because also that's the thing is that people have this thing, so many people, and this is the ego again, but I think that we've just been taught about this overnight success story. That is BS. Rags to riches. Rags that to riches. That is a very American. It is. It's so American. It's overnight success. Oh my God, you don't have to do anything. And all of a sudden you've got a million views on YouTube. Yeah. And that does not happen. I mean, it could happen. Oh, it would be amazing. I mean, we're not saying we don't want it to happen. And please subscribe and do all that shit so that it'll happen for us. But <laughs> um, it's not, but that's something that cannot be a driver for you. You no. have to keep doing it knowing full well that it might be a long and yeah. painful road. And at some point, I mean, I think that those who persist... It's a long and joyful road, too. It's joyful. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm drinking. I'm eating pizza. That's yeah. delicious, can yeah. I just say. And we're having a great... Like, honestly, that's a funny thing. Is like, I, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, Micah used to come over and we used to, like, drink and have these great conversations. And, like, we haven't had a chance to just sit down. And I'm like... And we're kind of doing it all right now. we ever do is have great conversations. All oh, we like, ever do. Oh, we're kind like, of doing that. We're yeah. just doing it on film. And so everybody gets to hear our brilliance, like, you know, here, which is wonderful. But yeah, it's a long road. And so it's kind of this consistent thing where we're like, we're not wasting time. We're right. just honing our craft. And we're yeah. just on this road and we're going to see what happens. But the road itself has such satisfaction that, like, it's hard to sour on something when, like, for me, I mean, what's your result that you're hoping to have. I mean, I think we're just exploring subjects and having a good time with it. And if it goes further and opens up more creative possibilities, we're quite pleased. Like, yeah. I don't think we have this expectation that, no, you know, no, no, no. I, I'm doing it because I, I'm absolutely having so much fun. I love doing the research. I love having the conversations. Mm-hmm. I love taking a, a concept you love and elaborating on it. And I love Fow Fow. Fow And uh, yeah, so I mean, there's so many aspects of it that I love that bring me to this right. space every week. And, and I think that that's the ultimate anti sour tool. It, it is. is fun and joy. Yeah. Right? Isn't it? Isn't it that is. the main, like, if yeah. you pour in enough joy into your sour? You are going to, you know, it gives you the sweetness that you can just keep going on. Like You will not have creative scurvy. I mean. Exactly. So, yeah. Avoid yeah. creative scurvy. Let us know in the comments below yes. what you guys do when you've soured on something. Like, how do you get around it? And how you avoid the excuse train. Because, you know, we're going to hop off of that. And uh, I think that that has been an excellent little thinking part to our creative happy hour. Yes. And on that note. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. Comment below. Subscribe to us. And we will see you guys next week with a new cocktail, new concepts, and a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers.